Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer. Today we are going to be analyzing Alphabet stock. Uh, ticker GOOGL is the one we're going to use. You can also look at GOOG, uh, but when I share the numbers, it's going to be for the, this particular ticker. As always, this is not individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. Uh, Alphabet came in by request down in the comments section of one of my other videos. If you have a request you'd like me to take a look at, put it down in the comments. I'll get the ticker on the whiteboard behind me. Eventually, I'll make a video. If it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, like Alphabet is, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post over on Patreon at the $5 per month tier level. Um, I also have a $25 a month tier level uh, where I share... Uh, weekly picks. So one one pick per week of the best relative value that I can find in the market. So if you watch my videos and you think my buy prices for these stocks are too low and they'll never happen and I will never find anything, uh, that weekly picks is a good place to go because even if I run out eventually, I haven't done so so far. It's off to a good start. We've been doing that, doing it about a month now. Um, so even if I don't find anything that's at my preferred buy price, I will find the next best thing that I can find and share it for the week. Um, so make sure to check out those links down in the description. There's also a free tier for Patreon where I post all the YouTube videos so you don't have to rely on the YouTube algorithm to get access to my videos. Um, anybody that joins one of those paid tiers on Patreon also will get a big discount if they ever des decide to join the full Cyclical Investors Club service over on Seeking Alpha, I've been writing on Seeking Alpha. I think this is my 10th year writing and we're almost, uh, let's see, we started, I started the Cyclical Investors Club in 2019 and we're almost to 2025. So we're gonna be starting our sixth year there or seventh, yeah, sixth, I think we're close to starting our sixth. Um, so uh, check those out and uh, and just if you have any questions, you can just ask me too. All right, so let's get into Alphabet. Great stock to analyze. Um, first thing we always like to look at is the historical earnings pattern. It's basically positive and great every single year until we get um, to COVID, which I'll zoom in on here in a second. So as far as we know, it's not super cyclical. But one note I will make is that uh, Google was much smaller in uh, 2008. So the equivalent of less than $10 a share. Uh, so that's, and now it's 170. Uh, I think it's a little more than 170 today because they reported good earnings. Um, so it was much smaller company, which means there's much more room for them to grow back then. And they could they grew through the Great Recession, so I'm not sure that the Great Recession, because it's 16 times bigger or something, now, is a good indicator of what the next recession might be like for them. So that's important to keep in mind. But so far, the evidence that we have is that they we know even if they do turn out to be pretty cyclical in a recession situation we know that they have had very strong earnings growth even if the earnings do turn out to be cyclical in the next recession. Now we do see they had a 19% decline in earnings growth uh, during the post-COVID bust here. And I actually uh, predicted this, I wrote articles about it. The decline, um, it almost got to my, there's been like three times that I've almost bought Alphabet. Uh, that it just missed my buy prices. One was in 2020, the next one was in 2022. Um, and then even more recently, it got pretty close during this last decline here. It was within 14% of my buy price, I think. So somehow I managed to just miss this one and it, it keeps growing. But we can see that I, and I thought this decline was going to be a little bit worse, but they cut a ton of, much like Meta, which I do own, they just cut a ton of costs. And that that enabled them to stop earnings from falling as much as they probably otherwise would have and put a bottom under the stock price sooner than I, I would have expected based on just what the historical trend looked like and what it probably would do. So 
they did a good job there. And unfortunately for me, it meant that I wasn't able to get the cheap price that I was looking for. But it, you can see they, they aren't invulnerable uh, to draw to having earnings decline it is a post um, stimulus and post pandemic kind of bust. But this is an advertise. Ultimately, it's mostly an advertising based business. And it, historically, ad businesses are pretty cyclical. They don't have to be super cyclical, but they are economically sensitive. Um, when, especially when smaller businesses start going under in recessions or they really have to tighten their budgets or the people out there just don't have the money to buy the product so the advertising may not be as effective as they need it to be all those things can lower the cost of advertising you know if you're bidding for ad space and there's fewer bidders then the prices go down and in theory that that would cause alphabet to make less money in a recession so i would expect some sort of earnings decline if we do eventually have a recession especially if it's a more global recession all right so let's get into the earnings analysis and the valuation and i'll share my buy price so it, overall i am expecting 13 percent forward earnings growth for um, alphabet analysts are basically expecting the same thing after this year and I think everything is kind of just pointing in that direction so that seems like a reasonable remember I'm going to take this out 10 years into the future and this is already a trillion dollar company okay so to grow 13% you know another 10 years would probably make them like I'm doing the math in my head but it's like a three trillion dollar company so it they the they're going to be big if they can grow that much. We know we already have government pressure to uh, reduce their size and power. Maybe they'll be broken up. don't know if that would be such a bad thing, but they are pretty integrated, I think. So um, I don't have a strong opinion about that. But just in general, it's hard to go from, it's a lot harder to go from 1 trillion to 3 trillion than 300 million to a trillion. And if you're going to assume that earnings can grow faster than 13%, which I think is already pretty good, then that's a pretty aggressive bet to, to base your valuation on. So 13% earnings growth is what I'm going to go with. I think there's plenty of evidence that they can do that. We've seen they've had years where they only grew 3%, right? So up and down, that's kind of my earnings growth expectation. All right, so the way I do this is I think of it as though I'm an owner of the business and, and they don't have any uh, debt really to speak of. So this is relatively simple calculation. And I say, okay, if I bought the company for $100 at the current price, how much am I paying for um, earnings? And how much money could I collect if I just kept all those earnings for myself as the owner of the business over the course of 10 years. And then I take that information and I create a kager, which is right here, spoiler alert. So 13% grow earnings, and I assume these earnings are gonna grow at 13% each year. So if we take the earnings yield, which is the earnings over the price instead of the price over the earnings, it's essentially the same as a PE ratio, but it's just expressed differently. So this is expressed as a decimal, but that's a 4.4% earnings yield. So for every $100 that the company that you um, buy of the company, or if you just bought the whole thing for $100, you would earn $4.40 as the owner of that business the first year. So I pull forward. Let me scroll far enough to the right here. So here's my 440. I pull forward the first year's growth, which is 13.09% assumption. So I think on $100, you would earn $4.98 that first year. And that $4.98 you would keep, so it would accumulate, and you would the next year you would earn $4.98 plus 13% more. And so that would go up to $10 after two years, $10.61 on your $100 that you would earn as the owner. So you, 
keep doing that until you got 10 years. 10 years, you would um, earn $92 on $92.12 on your $100 investment. So $100 would go to $192. And then I convert that into a Kager. So you start with $100, you end with $192 over 10 years. This is what the spreadsheet is set up to calculate. But you can go to uh, MoneyChimp. They have a good Kager calculator on their website. So it comes out to a 10-year Kager of 6.75%. Now, this is considerably cheaper than I think all the other Mag7 stocks. Definitely the S&P 500 on average, which is lower. Like It's probably more like 5.5% right now. So... And I consider 6.5 to be like the midpoint of fair value. And then above 8% is a, like where I would consider buying usually. So this looks pretty decent here compared to a lot of stocks in the market. As I said, it almost hit my buy price just a few months ago when the price was down a little bit more. Uh, so I don't think this is like extreme. The only thing I can think of is that the market has some risks with regulation that they have in mind and also risk with the cyclicality of the advertising which we don't know how cyclical it will be but i do feel more confident after watching how much kind of cost they were able to cut during this previous uh, decline after the covid stimulus on one hand I, i'm impressed by that on the other hand if they already cut a bunch of stuff it, I don't know if it's like a trick you can keep doing <laughs> if there is a recession. I'm sure there's more. I think they even said maybe in the earnings call, I saw a clip. I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I saw a clip where they said that there was more that they fat they could potentially trim. So, uh, so if they lean everything up before the next recession, they're probably not going to be able to do as much of it, you know. And I don't really know how that's all going to shake out. I would say this 13% earnings growth doesn't really have a major recession baked into it so if that occurs this could be end up being lower for sure you know it's just one of the risks but overall this thing looks fairly valued to maybe slightly undervalued here if a person really wanted to put money to work um, you know I wouldn't protest too much um, my basic buy price is $142 a share it's trading at 179 right now and my recession buy price which is actually based on this 2022 drawdown that I sh that I showed you um, from the pandemic stimulus bust so not a full recession but I had to use something as a guide and that seemed like the best one I could find so the recession buy price is 128.87 that's about 28% lower than it is now the 142 level is about 20% lower than it is now. Um, this is a lot closer to, the, to its buy price than most of the other big um, kind of tech companies, Magnificent Seven. So yeah, if I was forced to kind of go into one, uh, Alphabet would be the one I would I would choose. I'm kind of stubborn, so I'm holding out <laughs> and hope that I'll at least be able to get down i think if i got down to this 142 level i would probably buy like uh at least a small position honestly so i hope i hope that helps um just kind of give you some prices to aim for especially since i'm if you watch a lot of my videos you'll notice that my buy prices tend to be uh quite a bit lower than people expect and that one if like i said if, you, if you've been conditioned enough to see my minus 50 percent or minus 60 percent um, buy prices from where the stock is, then that 20% I mean, lower doesn't seem too crazy. Uh, back in 2021 and two, let's see how far it went down. We have a 40 plus percent drawdown, probably about a 45% drawdown. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So we know it can draw down that much. And even this summer, like I said, I it almost got to my level here. Um, that was a 20% drawdown. So if it drew t down 20% again, I'd probably be a buyer. We know it can happen. So, you know, I think it's within the realm of possibility if any kind of weird news comes out or the market gets jittery about something. Um, yeah, we might get an opportunity for this one. If, we, if I do buy it, I'll make a video. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and put one out on YouTube for everybody. 
Okay, if you enjoyed this, if it found it useful, hit the subscribe and like button. If you have a request, put it down in the comments, and I'll see everybody later.